Hi everyone and welcome to the Halfway Mark. My name is Nick Ranger. I'm a senior SEO specialist at Studio Hawk in Melbourne, but currently I'm broadcasting, that's correct, from Thailand. So just a quick reminder before we begin, just to shout out on um, to us on Twitter using the hashtag uh, five hours of SEO, which I've written here so we don't have to worry about what that is. Um, Great. So, Jason, um, thank you so much for that. Um, you'll now be switching out from the hosting duties to now leading the charge where um, we're going to be sharing the hidden treasures for your brand in the SERP. Um, made, of course, all the more intriguing because we're joined by um, the SEO DJ legend, Lily Ray and WordLift's own Andrea Vol Volpini. Welcome, guys. Hey, thanks for having us. Awesome. Hello. So, um, Jason, you're reporting in from Paris, um, but yes. Lily, wh where are you reporting from? I'm in New York. You can't quite see it, but there's the Empire <laughs> State Building out there. It's kind of hard to see, but here in oh New York City. Oh my gosh, that's so awesome. <laughs> um, how about you, Andrea? I'm in Rome and uh, right in the center. It's night, but uh, all, all is good. That's awesome. That's awesome. All right. Well, we've got a really, really awesome topic and I, I'm so excited. I'm, I'm pretty sure the comments are going absolutely nuts right now. So I'll lead you to start your presentation, Jason. Yeah, great stuff. Thank you very much. Um, I'm really pleased to have Lily Ray and Andrea because I think this fits together really well and we'll see if I'm right or not. I'll keep the presentation as short as I can, share my screen. Um, Try and just share the right window so you don't see all my... There you go. Can you see that? Yep. Yes. Yes. Right. The hidden treasures in your brand SERP, entities, and EAT. Um, we're ready to rock. I'm going to do it full screen so it looks better. Wonderful. Right. What does your brand SERP look like? That's the first question. Does it look like this? Your brand SERP, what somebody sees when they type your brand name into Google? Does it look like this, which is just the boring 10 blue links? Or does it look like this, something a bit more exciting with the rich elements? I call them rich elements. Some people call them SERP features. Could be the site links, could be the knowledge panel, could be the Twitter boxes, could be the video boxes, could be the image boxes. Have a look at yours right now. Type your brand name into Google. Which is yours? Is it the one on the left? Which doesn't look really great, or is it the one on the right that does? That's what we're going to be focusing on today. We're going to be looking at why the one on the right is so important, why your brand set is so important, why what somebody sees when they Google your brand name is so important. Side one of the coin is the people who see it. The people who Google your brand name are clients, prospects, investors, partners, potential hires, anybody who's thinking about doing business with you or is already doing business with you. They're the people who matter to your business and you want them to see something like this. A business who has this kind of brand surf is credible. It looks good and it's believable. You could even say that this surf is your business card. Do you want a business card that looks sexy like this or a business card that looks boring like the 10 blue links? but we can take it beyond the idea of just a business card. The side two of the coin is yourself. It's a way for you to understand your brand's digital ecosystem. And Google arguably gives us the best reflection of your brand possible. Google crawls the entire web. It understands the web. It's the best understanding humans have of the web, what's on the web about your brand, and it reflects back what it thinks so it gives you a window into your brand's digital ecosystem and it shows you all the aspects of your digital ecosystem from reviews to how good your social strategies are to what people are saying about you to what your partners are saying about you um, but today we're just going to look at google's understanding and your credibility what your brand set tells you about google's understanding and google's opinion of the world's opinion of you so how does Google decide what it's going to show? It shows what it feels brings value to the searcher. And the searcher, remember, is somebody who is either doing business with you already, a client who's navigating to your site, or somebody who's thinking about doing business with you, who's researching you. So what it's going to do is show what it feels brings most value to the searcher. So it shows an honest appraisal of your brand. 
for those people searching you. Now let's have a look at the, the, the treasures. This is the bit I really want to talk about with Andrea and Lily, because firstly with Andrea, the brand SERP you get uh, indicates the understanding Google has of you. Uh, here's Microsoft, so I thought it'd be quite funny to use Microsoft as an example within Google. We can see on the right hand side, Microsoft Corporation, the knowledge panel, it knows a lot about Microsoft and it's sufficiently confident in the information it has to show it right at the top of the set and show it as fact. And it also understands sufficiently well the ontologies, the categories that Microsoft falls into by showing other brands within that vertical. Further, it understands the subsidiaries. Now here, I'll just switch back. I clicked on the link, which you cannot see in the screenshot, but is there if you click on more, which is subsidiaries of Microsoft. And it can show us directly all the subsidiaries of Microsoft. This indicates Google has an understanding of Microsoft as an entity and its relationship with the other entities that are its subsidiaries. More than that, it also understands the fact that Microsoft is in the gaming um, area and that it's part of a group of consumer associations, whatever it might be, around Apple, um, the European consortium of something. I can't actually read the rest of that, but it's understood which areas Google, uh, sorry, Microsoft fits into, where its place is within the world, what it's related to, Sony Corporation, Nintendo as competitors. More than that, when you see that people also ask questions, I love these, and it means that Google's understood who Microsoft are, what they do, and what relevant questions people might ask, both about Microsoft, but also about its founder, its products, and also its competitors. And here's just a quick example of myself, which is a really simple example. If you type Jason Barnard's songs, it knows which songs I've written. I've written lots of songs for children. It understands that I am the author of these songs, the composer of these songs, and it can generate these results that indicate that it's understood those relationships. Now that's all about Google's understanding. And all I've done here is look at the brand SERPs. The brand SERPs have shown me what Google's understood about myself, in this case, and my songs, and in the other case, Microsoft and its vertical. Microsoft and its products, Microsoft and its founder, Microsoft and its competitors. Now we're moving on to the part that's slightly less easy to judge, reputation. You look at your brand SERP and Google will reflect back what it thinks the world thinks about you. What it's ranking here is things that it feels bring value to the people searching your brand name, which means that they're the results that reflect accurately your brand to those people researching you. I call it credibility. I like the word credibility because it, it expands outside that idea of simple reputation. And it looks at the idea of, am I a credible solution for Google's users? And that plays incredibly well into EAT, expertise, authority, and trust, which is why I asked Lily Ray to come along so that we can look at what the brand says about Google's opinion about my expertise, authority, and trust. And I say my, because I'm gonna use myself as an example. So if Lily Ray doesn't agree with this, she's gonna rip my reputation apart. Here's my brand SERP. I've been working on this for five or six years, uh, working very hard to get all those rich elements, just for this one moment, so that I can ask Andrea, does Google understand me? And ask Lily, does Google think I'm credible? We have here the obvious reputation things, which are the stars, uh, from a, a, a professional profile and then trust pilot that show that Google is ranking these two results as representative of my reputation in my industry with Mont, which is a French platform and trust pilot where they're reviewing me about being a consultant. So it's ranking those because it believes that those are representative of my reputation. Here we have um, authority, expertise, SEMrush, Search Engine Journal, recognized within the industry. These two are ranking, they're my profiles. It shows that Google understands that I have a relationship with them, but also that that relationship is solid. And that indicates to me, at least, that I have authority within my industry because these two sites also have authority. It's ranking my Twitter profile because 
The Twitter profile is relevant to my name when people are researching me, which indicates to me that what I'm saying and the people I'm interacting with is all part of a credibility signal um, that's very positive for my brand. Same thing for videos on YouTube. And same thing recently, I've got this, which is podcasts right at the top of my brand set. It indicates to me that those podcasts with experts in the digital marketing space are deemed to be important by Google, which indicates that my expertise and authority is perhaps higher than it was before, or at least that podcast is reflecting that that's important for Google as part of my persona. Um, I have the knowledge panel. I actually built that, and Lily's going to like this, around my musical career, and then switched it across. So that instead of saying Jason Barnard musician, which it used to, it now says Jason Barnard search engine marketing. So I use that as a, a springboard onto the knowledge gra graph, and then switched it across to become a digital marketer, and then built up the reputation with the podcast, with the Twitters, and with the videos. Uh, and the articles to, to switch Google's point of view of me across the search engine marketing. Now, the last point is tracking and measuring. This is something I've built a tool to do it, and you can track your brand name or your personal name on this tool for free. Uh, the idea being that it tracks over six countries, the brand search with all the different rich elements and the, uh, I call it optimization, it's actually the, the sentiment of each element. So you can track how well Google presents you over time. And I found it to be very useful and I've been optimizing my brand SERP. So I said, Google understands me, or Google, under, Google understands the brand, puts those rich elements up, and those rich elements potentially indicate its view of my EAT. What do you think, Lily Ray, and what do you think, Andrea? Yeah, I mean, uh, I think, Definitely, Jason, everything you said made a lot of sense. I think it kind of dovetails nicely into what I've been talking about and writing about with EAT, expertise, authority, and trust. Um, you know, one thing that I like to tell people and tell clients when they're thinking about EAT is what you mentioned, which is to look beyond just your own personal website or your company's website and look at the reputation of your brand online across different sites different platforms so you can actually like do a query where you can search for your brand name and exclude results from your own domain and then do things like reviews or customer service or trust or fraud or anything like that and get an understanding of what the landscape kind of looks like in the organic search results because presumably that's what Google's trying to get when it's measuring a brand's EAT. We don't exactly know how. Um, I think in the beginning when we started talking about EAT, Google's like, a lot of people thought maybe like the Better Business Bureau was something that Google was looking at. And they're like, no, we don't look at that as a ranking signal. But my theory is that they're looking at a lot of these different places kind of in combination. We don't exactly know how because they don't want us to spam those places. But certainly it's important to look beyond just your own domain name and try to improve your reputation across different sites. Which, which, sorry, which brings me to the point of Google's looking at all this stuff. It's trying to measure it. It's trying to analyze it or evaluate it. In my opinion, it needs to understand who you are and what you do in order to be able to apply it, which is where Andrea comes in. How do you get Google to understand you? Uh, well, I mean, um, it's, a, it's kind of a process that starts, I think, with uh, providing the information that Google gathers uh, within its, its schema. So... I think it, it all started when when the knowledge graph started, and um, and uh, the information is organized in 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 triples, and then these triples create the reality that represents you. Now, what I what I find extremely interesting is that uh, these triples are actually driving the user experience. So so when when we talk about Jason as a musician, then we can you know kind of display the link to the Deezer. But, but when we look at, uh, you know, for instance, uh, Jason from, from Italy, then we see, you know, the latest video that we recorded together here in Rome. And so mm -hmm. it's kind of this multifaceted reality that, uh, that, uh, that it's, it's within the graph and, it, and it's built around statements. So SEO is about creating these statements because these enable the experience on the SERP. Brilliant stuff. Sorry, Nick, I'll let you take over. I was still trying to present. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 that's all right. That's all right. Um, I like that you sort of were able to corner off to like each person's expertise. So, um, you know, just one picking up a little point about what you're saying with structured data, um, you know, by using structured data, that isn't necessarily um, a means of like, okay, so I, I add 
I had structured object from my site and therefore I will get knowledge graph or therefore I'll get feature snippet or um, what have you. It just gives you extra context about the information that is on the page. So um, we've had some really, really great um, questions that's come through. I'd really like to segue to maybe um, Simon Cox's question. Um, what do you do if you're not the most famous person of your name? Like how do you get um, how, like, how do you get a knowledge graph or how do you compete in the SERP to rise above that other business or, or personal? I think Lily can take these. <laughs> just fighting against the... You know. We were just talking about this this morning. There's another Lily Ray out there that makes music. I'm like, ah! Um, <laughs> so I'm working on it. But um, I think... Jason has in his memory like a list of databases that Google pulls from, right? And there's mm -hmm. a couple different ways to get in there, like get into Google's Knowledge Graph. I'm working through the lens of being a musician, so you have to kind of connect it to like songs that you've written or collaborated on. Um, but I guess being able to get into those databases in the first place is a good place to start. So whether it be through music or writing a book or being in a movie or some other way that you're being recognized by Google, and then you can kind of establish yourself as a knowledge graph entity, mm -hmm. then you can build from there. Like Jason was saying, he switched from being a musician to also being a digital marketer through that same knowledge graph entity. So that would yeah, be my I'm recommendation. Um, and I'd add something, I mean, I, I, that's a really brilliant answer. I wouldn't have thought of that at all, but putting it quite that way, at least. But um, the, the idea, for example, for Lily Ray, you've got that confusion. And I think that confusion, i.e. multiple Lily Rays appear, is one, Google's trying to hedge its bets because it's not sure which one we're talking about. But two, um, Google isn't confident enough. And with my name, which is actually quite common, there are well over 250 Jason Barnards in the world, including a footballer, in South Africa, who's actually currently playing and quite good. Uh, there's a couple of criminals in America, sorry, people in prison, that was a rotten way of saying it, I do apologize. Um, a dentist, a, a, a guy, a religious guy. And Google's only showing me, it would appear that I'm the only Jason Barnard in the world who exists, which is very bizarre. And I think the main reason for that is because it's so confident in the information it's got. And because it's got all these knowledge graph entities my name plus the songs plus the cartoon characters plus the uh, my mother plus my sister but all these entities with their relationships and it's saying I can put all this up and I know it's true and I'm confident so the fact that the probability that we're searching with that particular Jason Barnard isn't so very high gets kind of drowned out by the fact it's just going oh look I know all this stuff is like a kid really going oh look at what I know mum what do you think Andrea Totally, totally true. I mean, um, I have uh, my counterpart. There is another uh, very famous uh, swimmer and another uh, <laughs> world champion, much better looking than me. Uh, and, uh, and so I've been fighting and he had a Wikipedia page. So I started with uh, with this guy having a Wikipedia page. But uh, but I, I could turn these up uh, quite quickly just by creating links um, in the form of same as. Mm -hmm. uh, that we're referencing back uh, the data that uh, that I was publishing within my own knowledge graph, so so that that really changed things. So if if if, if Lily now gets the the ID from Google and and kind of puts it back into you know whatever profile she has, then mm -hmm. this will increase the confidence that Google has about you know that person, and uh, and 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 then it just works nicely. And and now it it, it takes only you know a few days. Uh, we have to consider that. You know there are 200 uh, wheels meet on wikipedia so there is a lot of ambiguity in the information that a search engine has to deal with and uh, and we know from bing that uh, that uh, the entity of of of, of wheels meet uh, gets information from 41 websites so the more website we we provide information and links you know the more credible we are awesome so um Sorry, I just, I sorry, I just looked up Will Smith, and it looks like there is only one Will Smith in the world, even though there are 200 <laughs> yeah. on Wikipedia. Yeah, and, and, and that, that, that's really interesting, just from a point of yeah. view of saying Google, the probability I'm looking for him is obviously much higher than the other Will Smiths, but not that much higher since Wikipedia has 200 Will Smiths in it. But the fact that it's so sure about this guy means that yeah. he comes up front and center. Sorry, go ahead, Nick, I interrupted you. No, 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 that's all right. Um, my question is is now like, okay, well, we know this is important. We know that this is um, increasing a lot more. We're seeing a lot more knowledge graphs um, into the SERPs. Um, you know, if a brand doesn't have a knowledge graph, 
Um, at what point do you decide, like, in the strategy that this is really important to start to implement that? I think it's the first thing. For me, it's the first thing. If you don't have it, <laughs> what are we talking about? <laughs> I mean, it, it's the same thing that we're doing with most of our SEO strategies nowadays anyway, is to add schema to our sites, right? So it's mm -hmm. every company can add either organization, local business, corporation, whatever type of company you are, there's always going to be that type of schema available. And it's relatively easy to implement nowadays. So I would say it's mm -hmm. do it, you know, it's part of SEO in general, but it definitely will help encourage that knowledge graph result. I, I really like the idea that I mean, we're all putting a schema markup and some people just haven't realized why they're doing it. And the reason you're doing <laughs> it is you're explaining the triples that Andrea was talking about earlier, because it's all about triples. It's entities with relations to other entities. So we're putting this schema markup to explain to Google in Google's maternal language or natural language, whatever you might call it. Um, and then once you put that on, you've done your organization data schema markup, then you hook other ones onto it, like your products and your offers and your offices and the people who work for you and your C-level employees and you're building, which is what WordLift does, if I understand correctly, building a knowledge graph within your site. That was a quick plug for WordLift, which is great. Mm. If it, th thanks, Jason. So if you allow me, I, I can show you a quick preview of, of yes. what we're doing now. In, 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 it's an experiment, but it kind of give you an idea of, of the level of interaction that uh, the data that you have on your website can, can really trigger on Google. So that's, Great. if you see your screen, do you see my screen? Yep. Yes. Okay, cool. So basically what we're testing now is that, uh, you know, we have a blog, so we have a site over here and then, uh, and then we are publishing data in the form of a knowledge graph. And then, you know, we have an API here and then uh, we are using uh, an experiment that the Google calls mini apps in order to inject an experience into the SERP. And uh, so I'm going to show it. It's not live yet, so it's going to just test it here. And um, so we can see that I have an emulator here that uh, allows me to run queries. And I'm, I'm triggering a query like uh, World of Courses by Jason Barner that, uh, that pulls up these, uh, this carousel with the different courses. And, um, and we can see it from here. And, uh, and then I can click on it. And it, so it's a branded query. But, uh, but there is a specific intent that triggers an experience in the SERP. So I can see that, uh, you know, I, I want to do this because Jason is really good when he talks about knowledge graphs. And I, I want to follow <laughs> that. <laughs> and, uh, and so I'm, I'm, I'm getting into the course and I'm, I'm browsing my website, but, uh, but I'm, not, I'm not using, I'm not touching the web pages. There's just the data that, uh, that we have structured into the graph using the schema vocabulary. And this data is what we're presenting to the Google Assistant and to Google Search in order to create you know, this interactive experience. And that's, I think, really the paradigm shift of branded SERP because we are creating our own website inside Google. And I can filter the content by using the entities that I have on my site. That's awesome. That is so awesome. Yeah, well, and it is that. Is what what does the site do? I mean, in, other than sell things to our clients, it explains who we are and what we do. And that's my favorite kind of phrase: is saying we need to explain to Google who we are, what we do. That's understanding. Then we need to prove to Google that we're the most credible. That's EAT. We're the most credible solution. And then we need to make sure that we make content that's deliverable to Google's users, either on their SERP or on our site. Um, yeah. And I love the idea of getting that understanding, which which leverages EAT. So, I mean, for, for me, um, that's the most exciting thing for me is saying, if I can get Google to understand who I am, then I can big myself up and make my EAT more valuable to me. Would that be fair, Lily? Yeah, I mean, so Google doesn't necessarily know who every author is on the internet. And that's something we talked about before with like the knowledge graph. And mm -hmm. if you're in the knowledge graph, does that make you more reputable? Which I think probably to an extent, yes. You know, Google has a, some knowledge about who you are as an entity or as, a, as an expert. Um, and so it's a good <laughs> idea to, to start thinking about EAT, even if you're not in the knowledge graph, because you may eventually get in there. Um, mm -hmm. But, you know, you do want to think about what your reputation is online, um, especially as it relates to like, what topics are you writing about? What does your author biography look like? You know, what are your credentials to write about this and putting all that content out there 
getting yourself associated to other websites that you might be mentioned on. And as Andrea mentioned, like same as, you know, schema markup, creating those entities and those connections is something that's going to build up your own personal EAT. And, um, you know, having good individual EAT is going to benefit the EAT of the company that you work for, or that you write for. So absolutely. Agreed. Yeah. And, and even if Google hasn't fully understood uh, all those entities with relationships is the only way it can possibly get a grasp of EAT. I'm authoritative yeah. because I'm related in some way to other authoritative sources such as yourself or Andrea or Nick. Definitely. I think there is also, you know, interesting connection between uh, like uh, what we do as person or brands and what we create. Like, like you show your example, Jason, of of the of the songs that you have created. Now, for Google, when you get into the knowledge graph, and it gets the song, you can quickly correlate the two things and check the dates. And 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 using a meta schema, he knows that you know the data is to kind of you know play in such a way that there is a correlation and 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 you know you're coming before the songs and so on and, and there is a lot more of this connection that actually changed the way that the SERP look and the rankings of the results thank you so much i think that's really really awesome and a good place to end off um <laughs> <laughs> um i know we, we we really pressed for time here there's so many awesome questions that's coming through please um tweet at us after this um with the the hashtag um five hours of seo with all your questions um i'd like to remind everyone to please subscribe to the um the SEMrush YouTube channel and of course to our wonderful guests thank you where can they find you Jason uh, I, I've managed to just um, make all my usernames on all the platforms the same it's Jason M Barnard uh, on Twitter Facebook LinkedIn and what's the other Instagram awesome how about you Lily uh, Twitter's best it's Lily Ray NYC excellent and Andrea uh, cyber Randy on Twitter Cyberandium? Yep. Is that, yep. did I get that right? <laughs> awesome. <correct. laughs> All right, find us on Twitter, follow it, and um, thank you so much for your time.